Psalm 77, we're just going to read a few verses and then get into the introduction of the message. The psalmist begins with, I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave unto me. Well, right there, we ought to just stop and shout that God would even take time to listen to us. Said in verse 2, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. Uh, listen, it's wonderful when you're on the mountaintop, but aren't you glad when you're in the lowest valley? Yeah, right. He can be found. Yes, sir. Hmm? He said, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained. And my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. God, thank you for the good, sweet spirit of God. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for your goodness toward us. Lord, I pray for the next few minutes that, God, you'd bind the powers of hell. And, uh, Lord, I know the devil doesn't want your people to get help. He doesn't want them to shine his lights in this dark world. He wants them to be defeated. He wants them to feel like uh, this psalmist when he begins this psalm. He wants them to feel overwhelmed. God, I'm glad that in the person of Christ Jesus and through the sweet Holy Ghost of God and through the blood of Jesus, we cannot be overwhelmed. We can be overcomers. And I thank you for your goodness toward us. Now, bless now, encourage your people. I do pray for... Those that are sick and afflicted, I pray for Brother Greg. You touch him tonight. Continue to help him. Heal his throat. Use him in a greater capacity in the days to come than you have all these years combined. Father, I pray for Brother Gary and Miss Marcy. You'd give them traveling mercies. As they're one on their way to Arizona. I pray for Brother Gary's mother. You know what she stands in need of tonight. I pray you'd touch her. I pray your will would be done. I pray the same for Miss Renee's mother. You would be with her as she is sick. I pray for uh, this gentleman by the name of Otis that has COVID, Lord. I pray that you'd give the doctors wisdom, and I certainly pray for him. I pray for David Sands and his family. You know what is needed there. We pray your will would be done in that. And then, Father, we certainly pray for Brother Rod. Miss Lynn is there traveling. I pray for Brother Eddie and Brother Clint's brother Donnie that is facing surgery. God, you would touch him and your will would be done there. The other request, I pray for them. I do plead now, Lord, you'd help us. Lord, I realize many of your people have worked hard this week, even hard this day. Lord, after coming out of such a good meeting, I realize many of them have faced adversity. They faced hardship this week. The devil wants to rob any joy, any help that we got uh, from the weekend. So I pray now, Lord, as they have found themselves in the house of God tonight, God, I pray that you do work in them. I pray that you would greatly encourage them in the faith. Uh, and God, I pray that you would certainly walk amongst us tonight. Uh, Lord, I know it's Wednesday night. I know it's church night. Lord, but there may be somebody here tonight unsaved, lost without God. Uh, Lord, I pray that, Lord, if that's the case, I pray we'd see them saved uh, even this very hour. And Father, I certainly do pray that revival would continue to burn in our hearts, and I pray that we'd see a great move of God uh, in these days. Thank you for Brother Corrado and his uh, 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 wife. I pray that you would uh, be with them as they travel home, watch over their church tonight as he's away. God, I pray you'd uh, bless there and give the increase there. Uh, send revival to their church. Use them in a great way. Uh, now, Father, help us, and we'll thank you for what you do. Uh, use this unworthy vessel and get glory to your name. Uh, Father, we'll thank you about these unworthy heads and thank you and praise you for all you do, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. I want you to notice a few things. Uh, and we'll get to the message. I want you to notice, first of all, the psalmist's uh, suffering. He is suffering uh, in this psalm. Uh, uh, can I show you, first of all, he's troubled. We see in verse number 2, uh, and then he uh, uh, repeats it in verse number 3. He said, in the day of my trouble, uh, he's facing trouble. Uh, friend, uh, you know this as well as I. Uh, Job said, man's days are few and full of trouble. Uh, 
You may be on the mountaintop tonight. Uh, uh, the bills might be paid, might have groceries in the pantry. Uh, uh, the kids might be well. Uh, uh, everything is going well in your life. I pray it's that way. But neighbor, if you hang around long enough, the winds of adversity will start blowing and you yourself may find yourself in a troublesome situation. He is facing trouble, but it goes beyond that. Can I say it's one thing to have some trouble. It's one thing to have some problems. It's one thing to face some discouragement. It's one thing to have adversity. It's a whole nother thing to be tormented. He is being tormented. Look at verse number 3. He said, I remembered God and was troubled. He said, I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Can I say in verse 2 he talked about his sore ran in the night. He is tormented. He cannot get away from trouble. It is haunting him. Uh, he said even when he remembers God, he begins to complain. I don't know about you. Uh, I know you've got a halo. I know you never have uh, any problems. Uh, 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 you walk on water. Uh, uh, nothing has ever caused you to ever grumble or murmur about anything. Uh, uh, but I've been saved 47 and a half years. Uh, Brother Bob, I'd like to say I've always been super spiritual. Uh, I'm super duper spiritual guy. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, uh, there's been days when I've failed the grace of God. There's been days uh, uh, when I've found myself uh, not feeling saved, uh, not feeling uh, a touch of God in my life. Uh, there's been days uh, uh, when instead of praising God, I feel like I'm carrying the devil on my back and I begin to murmur and complain. He's tormented. And let me just stop right there. If you're saved tonight, the devil knows he can't get you unsaved. But he does know he can make you miserable. In the battle, uh, we fight spiritual wickedness in high places. Our, our fight is not with flesh and blood. Uh, uh, can I say, he knows exactly how to shoot fiery darts your way uh, to torment you. In the battle, my dear friend, it's not a physical battle. The battle's in your mind. He knows things that has caused you to get weak before and he'll come back around and he'll shoot at that thing and shoot at that thing and shoot at that thing he strives with everything that is in him to rage a war in your mind can I say he'll use all kinds of tactics Paul says we're not ignorant of his devices can I say one of the things he uses against Christians is a very ugly word called doubt He'll take somebody who's weak in the faith, Brother Brian, and he'll cause them to doubt their salvation. That's right. Amen. They forget the very blood that has washed them, and they'll trample on that blood. You see, if the Holy Ghost lives in you, and then you doubt whether or not your Savior grieve in Him in your life. Right. How in the Word can you be a light? How can you be a witness? How can you have a good testimony when you're doubting whether or not you even got Him? Yep. Amen. Mm. And can I say, uh, 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 if you get that thing nailed down, you know that you got saved. Uh, 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 you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you got saved. You, you don't doubt that you're saved. Uh, he'll cause you to doubt whether or not you got his touch. He'll cause you to doubt whether or not uh, uh, you can witness to somebody because you might not know enough of the Bible. He uses that excuse all the time. Listen, you don't have to be a Bible scholar to be a witness. Uh, all you got to do is tell them what Jesus did for you and how he saved you. Mm -hmm. They start asking questions you don't know. Don't try and fake it. Say, I don't know that. Was this thing I do know? I once was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Huh? Mm. He'll cause you to doubt whether or not you can be a witness. He'll cause you to doubt uh, 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 whether or not uh, 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 you're worthy to even serve Him. Uh, uh, listen, there's none of us uh, in our flesh worthy of anything but hell. Uh, but hey, I can report to you tonight uh, that you've been robed in His righteousness. Uh, you've been washed in His blood. Uh, you've been justified by faith. Uh, hey, uh, uh, He has made you worthy or worthy in Christ to serve Him and live for Him him he wants to make you feel like you're a second class citizen but the bible says we're of a royal priesthood a chosen generation uh, uh, we are not of the rudiments of this world we're above this world my dear friends do you realize we're going to judge angels one day doesn't sound like the second class citizen to me um, but see that's why being in the bible is so important 
I'm glad you come to church. I'm glad you enjoy preaching. I'm glad no matter who's doing the preaching, you enjoy the preaching. Uh, but can I help you with something tonight? If you don't have a daily regiment of Bible reading and Bible study, and you'll live a very defeated Christian life. Amen. But when you get in the Bible, you'll get faith. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So when old Slewfoot shows up, you'll recognize him. You'll recognize his tactics. And, uh, and you can tell him, hallelujah, where the blood's been applied to your life and tell him to get off your back. Right. Bible says, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Hmm? Amen. So can I say, he's troubled. He's tormented. But he's more than that. He's traumatized. Look in verse number 4. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I want to tell you something. When you are so traumatized with your problems that you can't even speak, that's a problem. When the weight of the world is on you so much that you've lost words. I want to tell you something. That's a good place to be when you're calling on God. When you can get into prayer closets, you can grab the horns of the altar and you can begin to call on God and God show up in your prayer meeting with Him uh, uh, and you get to the point you run out of words and the Spirit itself intercess, uh, intercedes uh, what is in your heart to God. I want to tell you, that's some of the best prayer meetings you can ever have. Amen. But when trouble overloads you so much that you can't even speak, I've seen people broken to the point they can't speak. They're traumatized. We see the psalmist is suffering. But thankfully, this psalm doesn't end there. You know, some people quit right before the blessing comes. People give up right before God shows up. Hmm? We see him suffering, but I want you to notice him searching. Verse number 5, I want you to notice he begins searching... He considers his past. He says, I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. He's searching. He's considering his past. The next time the devil causes you to doubt anything, I highly recommend you go back to a place where God gave you assurance. You go back to a place where God gave you a verse. You go back to a place where God stirred your soul. You go back to a place uh, where you was on the mountaintop with God and you was walking hand in hand with the Lord. Uh, uh, you begin considering when God's answered your prayers in the past. Uh, you begin to consider when God's allowed you to sit in a meeting uh, and He showed up big in your soul. Uh, hey, uh, quit looking around where you are and go back to where God moved in your heart and life. He considers His past. Then he begins to commune in his heart. Look at verse 6. He said, I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Can I say something tonight? The thing that will help you most when you hit rock bottom, is you begin to remember the goodness of God and when God did move and when God did bless and when God did answer and when God did show up and you begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. That's what David did. David and his men had been out and fought a great battle. They come back to Ziklag. They find the city uh, 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 burnt. They find their wives and their children have been taken hostage. Uh, his men are tired. Uh, his men are wore out. They've been in battle. Uh, and now they've, uh, uh, they're have they broken hearted. Their families, they can't wait to see mama. They can't wait to see the children. Uh, and their families have been carried away captive. Uh, and them and their hurt. I'm talking about men that love David. Uh, men that at first took all to follow David. David. Uh, now they're getting ready to take up stones and stone David. Uh, you'd think David would be uh, uh, sucking his thumb. You'd think he would be walking on his lower lip. Uh, you'd think David would uh, uh, try to sneak out. Uh, but the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Uh, then he got a word from the Lord. Uh, and they went and they recovered all, oh, my dear friends. Uh, when you begin to commune in your heart, 
begin to amuse and remember the things of old and remember when God's blessed and when God's moved and when God sets his soul on fire. It encourage yourself. Isaiah 61 3 says that God's got a, a, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The next time that you think you can't take another step, uh, just break out in song. Start singing a song, uh, 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 blessed assurance. Uh, start singing, uh, 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 it is well with my soul. Uh, start singing uh, in the garden. Uh, uh, start singing how great the Father's love is for me. Uh, you begin to sing a song of praise unto God. Uh, and whatever was doom and gloom, business will pick up in your heart. Uh, and you'll find He's real in your life again. And, uh, he communes with his heart, considers his past, but then he contemplates what God's will is. Look at verse 7. He said, Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? In his mercy, is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercy? Selah says, so stop and ponder that. Uh, he's saying, is God quit being God? That's what he's saying. Uh, and he's thinking these things. Uh, then he gets to remembering, uh, hey, uh, God's promises are real. Uh, they're true. Uh, and God has promised uh, uh, to attend to the prayer made in the house of God. Uh, and God has promised uh, to be a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Uh, and God has promised to never leave me nor forsake me. Uh, and he begins to consider the, uh, what God's will is. Uh, and he realizes one thing. Uh, uh, God had been good to him. Uh, and it's not God's will for him to sit down and have the pooch mouth. So many Christians are so easily defeated today because you forgot how good God is. Now, friend, it may be dark in your life right now, but I promise you one thing. The sun's going to come up sooner or later. Either the S-U-N will come up in your life or the S-O-N is going to come up in your life. But it'll be all right, friend. Nothing else. You just get to go to the grave and wake up in glory. It'll be okay. Amen. We see a searching. We see a suffering. But in these verses, I find a summary. He remembers some things. Can I say, first of all, he remembers his own weakness. Verse number 10, And I said, This is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I told you he remembered the goodness of God. But here he remembers his own weakness. He said, This is my infirmity. Hmm. You know, it would be real good if we'd get honest with God at times. I've said this for years. Christians are some of the best actors I've ever seen. Your whole world could be falling apart. You walk in them doors, you put on a fake smile, you shake everybody's hand, you act like everything's great. You think that's being, you know, showing humility. No. Showing false pretense. The greatest thing you can do is walk in and say, My world's hit rock bottom. But blessed be the name of the Lord, I was able to make it to the house of God tonight. I need some help tonight. Would you pray for me? Uh now, I understand, Brother James, why people can't do that because in a lot of churches, you come in and say that, they're going to break their neck to find out what's going on in your life and so they can go out and talk about you. They're going to start while you're sitting in the house of God searching Facebook, see if you posted anything, uh, and they're going to do everything they can to kill you because it makes them look better. Can I say that is not Christian? That is ungodly. The Bible says we're, we're to esteem others better than ourselves. The Bible says, bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Uh, uh, the Bible says, uh, if you see a brother overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore them, lest thyself also be tempted. Uh, tells me there's not a whole lot of folks that are spiritual nowadays uh, if they're more interested in hurting a brother uh, than helping a brother. huh? Amen. But he begins to summarize by remembering his own weakness. i got news for you. I don't care how big a cape you wear. You yourself don't know of how, you know, what your heart is capable of. In a weak moment, you can do far worse than anybody else. You better be careful pointing a finger at somebody. you got three more pointing at you. 
Can I help you something? I, I don't have problems with the Pentecostals and the Catholics. I mean, you know who I have the biggest problem with? The guy I look in the mirror at every day. Hmm? He remembered his own weakness. That's a good thing. Remember, outside the grace of God, we're nothing. But then he begins to remember God's works. Look what happens in verse 11. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Friend, you, when you get to remember and considering all that God's done, and you start telling others about all that God's done, you know what immediately happens? You forget about your misery. Hmm? He remembers God's works. And then he remembers God's ways. Look at verse 13. He says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Uh, thou hast declared thy strength among the people. We could read the rest of the chapter, but what I'm trying to say is he remembers uh, God's ways uh, are in the sanctuary. Uh, if I can just get down there, uh, I can hear them start singing about God. Uh, I can hear a message about God. Uh, God began to speak to my heart. Uh, I'll find his way for my life. Uh, I got to read all this and said all that but I'm really interested in verse 14 he says thou art the God that doest wonders the wonders of wonders God did God's wonders should make us marvel stand in awe of who he is and what great things he's done with that thought, I want to preach for just a few minutes tonight on the marvels of the Master. The marvels of the Master. So you might have come in here tonight looking at you and your problems or looking at this world and this world's problems or looking around and seeing other people's problems. Uh, but if I can get your attention to the Master and all of His marvels... You'll forget about problems for a little while, huh? And I hope tonight you can see the wonders of the Lord. Can I say there's too many to name, but I got to thinking about the wonders of creation. Can you say, uh, just go with me and just think about this for a minute. God took nothing and made everything. God said, let there be light, and there was light. The earth was void without form, huh? And God, uh, I spoke. Uh, God said, let there be plant life. And there was plant life. Uh, and God said, let there be waters. And there was waters. Uh, and God said, let there be beasts and fowls and fish. Uh, and may they make after their kind. Uh, and God spoke. Uh, and it happened. Uh, think about the wonders of creation. Uh, uh, last night, uh, there was a little rainstorm come up about 6.30. Uh, and I was on my way back through Florence. Uh, and one of the most beautiful rainbows was uh, flying over Florence. Uh, and I was reminded that God gave the first rainbow. Uh, I'd remind Noah he'd never uh, uh, destroy this thing by water again. Uh, but he's going to destroy it by fire the next time. Uh, but the beauty of a rainbow... Uh, God made that. Uh, hey, the beauty of a waterfall. Uh, God made that. Uh, the beauty of the flowers that clothe the fields. Uh, God made that. Uh, the beauty of roses. I mean, if all he ever made was roses, uh, that would be beautiful. Uh, but he, Brother Bobby made them in every color. Uh, and then he made uh, all kinds of other flowers. Uh, Miss Annette's uh, planting them all in our yard. Uh, I mean, just think of all the plant life. Uh, Think of all the uh, uh, haciendas uh, and all the mums uh, and all the flowers uh, and all the colors. Uh, God did that. Uh, hey, uh, God made amber waves of grain flowing uh, in the fields throughout the plains of America. God gave uh, corn uh, and God gave green beans uh, and God gave taters uh, and God gave tomatoes uh, and God made all of that for our enjoyment. Uh, hey, uh, God's the one that made all the animal kingdom, uh, the great beasts like the elephants uh, and the rhinoceroses uh, and 
hippopotamuses, uh, and then he made beasts like horses, uh, and zebras, uh, and giraffes, uh, and then God made uh, uh, animals like dogs, uh, so you could feed them and put them in your house, uh, and God made kitty cats, uh, and God made even smaller creatures, uh, God made insects, uh, and he made worms, uh, and he made the most important animal known to man, uh, and you don't even think about it, uh, it's the honeybee, uh, without the honeybee, uh, we wouldn't have any vegetation, uh, and mankind would have died off a long time ago, uh, and God made all those things, uh, so we could have a steak every now and then, uh, hallelujah, uh, and through hallelujah, the blood of Jesus, we don't live under the law, uh, and we can have a hog every now and then, uh, Hey, and God bless where we can have chickens. Uh, and God bless where we can have turkey. Uh, I mean, God's a good God. Uh, and you think about how he made everything. It's a wonder. And then to think, God with his own hands. I mean, he spoke everything else in existence. But the Bible says he formed a man out of the dust of the earth. God took his own hands and he reached down into the muck and mire of this world. Uh, and he reached down and he grabbed the dust. Uh, the most filthy thing that you can think of. Uh, I preached in that tent meeting last week. Uh, had more of these shoes since then. Got them out. Uh, they's filthy. Had dust. Uh, and had sawdust all over. I had to polish my shoes. Uh, but God, uh, he said, I'm going to take the dust. Uh, and what I do is going to polish more dust. Uh, Hey, he formed man, uh, and then he formed him in his own image. Uh, then God breathed into man the breath of life, uh, and man became a living soul. Uh, I'm talking about the words of creation. Uh, just think about how God made you, uh, how God makes little ones. Uh, think about how your fingers move, uh, and your toes move, uh, and your blood uh, uh, runs through your veins. Uh, how you have uh, uh, white blood cells and red blood cells. Uh, how you're made up of molecules and atoms uh, and everything that made. Uh, how God puts hair on some heads uh, and how he takes it off of others. I mean, God, uh, he created everything. Uh, and you think about the wonders. Uh, how God can cause somebody to be able to sing. Uh, and it blesses your heart. Uh, how God gives somebody a talent to preach. Uh, and it challenges your heart. Uh, how God gives somebody an intellect to teach. Uh, and how it just enlightens you to truth. Uh, I mean, you think about the wonders of God creating all that. Uh, it'll help you out of your hard times. That God cared so much for you. That he made you. And he put things around you to remind you of him. Huh? Do you realize? I know y'all don't think I study, but I do. I read this. The world has water vapors. You realize ever since God made the earth, He's never created more water? The earth has the exact same amount of water at all times. Sometimes it's condensated and it's back up in clouds. And sometimes they get too heavy and then it comes back to the earth. But God has them clouds travel the globe and dumps water where it's needed. God knows folks don't live in deserts, but they live in the bluegrass state. So God knows we need water and the desert doesn't. I mean, he knows exactly what he's doing. But he's created everything for our good pleasure that we might be reminded of him, uh, that we might worship him for his wonders. I've been blessed to be in some beautiful places. I've been blessed to be down there where Nas is from. I've seen some waterfalls down there. I've been to Sulphur Springs. It's one of the few phenomenons in all the world where that water comes out of that spring. You went in there and burned the hide off of you. And that volcano as it comes up. But then it filters down to where you can get in there. And the minerals in that water, Sammy swears up and down to take 10 years off your life. It must not work because he don't get in it very much, huh? Uh, well, he's down there. Christian got a mud bath. Tay and sitting there, they got a mud bath in there. Say, putting that mud on you does something for you. 
But they, 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 I watched that inside that volcano that's hard, that bubbling up. It said, if you got down in there, it instantly cook you. How many hundreds of degrees that is. And it smells so terrible. It smells like sulfur, rotten eggs. And I heard somebody say one time, why does it have to stink? Can we not have the smell? And the guy said, oh, no, no, no. When it doesn't have smell, that means it's deadly. The smell lets us know it's okay. I come back, preach a message on I don't know if you all remember that. When sin loses its scent, that's when it becomes deadly. Hmm? But I've seen that. I've seen uh, uh, the rainforest down there and the beautiful vegetation and how bamboo grows six inches a day. It's unbelievable. And they got bamboo growing and all the flowers and all the things. Been to Hawaii and seen the volcanoes and the rainbows. Been blessed to see a lot of, and it just lets me know the wonders of his creation. The little Sammy, all the rainbows, all the waterfalls, all the things, is nothing compared to what he did when he made you. Jesus didn't die for the rainbows, but he died for you. Huh? You think about the wonders of his creation. I could camp there all night. Let me say this. And then there's the wonder of his character. You know, God is holy. You know, we can't even conceive what holy is because all we live in is depravity. Do you know God can't even be tempted with evil? He's so holy. That before it can even come into his presence, it's eradicated because of his holiness. He's holy. He's never even thought about sinning, let alone sinned. He's holy. He's so holy, there's a special sect of angels called the seraphim, and all they do is fly over his throne and cry, Holy, 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 holy. And he who is holy looked at the lowly, you and I, and he loved us anyway, my dear friends. The wonders of his holiness. Did you ever try and figure out God? You can't. Matter of fact, you'll get in trouble if you try to apply human reasoning to God. Because His ways are past finding out. His ways are above our ways. The things of God are a mystery to our little finite minds because He's infinite. Do you realize God, uh, 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 there is no such thing as time and space with God? What did He tell Moses His name was? I am that I am. Do you realize with God, He's always in the presence, uh, 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 the present? Uh, uh, do you realize that God uh, uh, is uh, Alpha, Omega, beginning and ending? Uh, he's all of it. Uh, there is no time with God. Uh, uh, do you realize there is nothing that will, He cannot transcend uh, when He uh, resurrected from the grave? Uh, the 120, or the, I mean, the apostles were in the upper room uh, and He just walked through the walls. Uh, why? Because elements do not fathom God. God is greater than all. The wonder of God is He's far beyond anything that we can imagine. He rends the heavens and walks and skips on the hills. The earth is His footstool. You think the wonders of His character and the wonders of His creation, the wonders of His compassion. The Bible says, for God is love. The Bible says we love Him because He first loved us. He said in Jeremiah uh, uh, 31, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Now we like to use the phrase, uh, 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 when I was unlovable, God loved me. Hogwash. Uh, there's never been a time you was unlovable. He's always loved you, friend. Uh, uh, he is love. Uh, and His compassion uh, for His creation uh, is that God would move heaven and earth to show you and I His love. Uh, just think about on your worst days, God still loves you. Can I help you with this? God has never loved you, Brother Brian, any more than He loves you right now. And He's never loved you any less than He loves you right now. He's just always loved you. Hmm? The only thing we can even begin to equate it with is a mother's love for a child. 
She'll put herself in arm's way to protect her child. There isn't anything she wouldn't sacrifice to make sure that her child doesn't do without. And every good godly mother wants her child to excel what she has in life. Uh, and can I say, uh, our father uh, uh, went to Calvary because he loved us. Uh, there's nothing he would withhold from us because he loves us. Uh, and he aspires us to be far greater than we ever could have been uh, because he loves us. There's just the wonder of his compassion. Then there's the wonder of his Christ. To think that God would give his only begotten Son, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You think about Christ. You think that song that Miss Crystal sang. You think about the wonder of his suffering. I preached on the cross not long ago that they plaited his, his brow with a crown of thorns and peeled the flesh off his brow. Isaiah tells us they plucked out his beard. Isaiah tells us that his visage was marred much more than any man. Isaiah tells us the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He became sin that he could atone us from our sin. The Bible says that he was buffeted. He was beaten. Can I say the Bible says that he was beaten with a cat of nine tails. Uh, 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 they sent him to uh, the hall of praetorium and they scourged him. Uh, uh, can I say uh, he was beaten with many stripes and then they laid on him the cross and he carried his cross down the Via Della Rosa and then he yielded himself to the cross. Uh, and my dear friends, they drove the nails in his hands and his feet and they suspended him between heaven and earth uh, and the father could no longer look upon his son uh, and he turned his back on his son uh, and he didn't want any anyone else to see him dying in their open shame and he closed off the light from the sun and I said I told you God said let there be light science and this is why you don't trust science Mr. Fauci science will tell you that the sun is a star that has all these supernova explosions and those explosions give off uh, uh, heat and light and that's what, what warms our earth our earth just happens to be the exact distance it needs to be from the sun. That just happened through the Big Bang Theory. And that and some little amoeba crawled out of a pond somewhere and all of a sudden turned into Colton. That's what they want you to think. <laughs> Probably not too far off on that there, dude, huh? But study your Bible. Before God made the, the sun and the moon, before He put the firmaments in the sky, He made light. Light doesn't come from the sun. Light comes from God. When God turned his back on the darling son of Calvary, dying on the cross for you and I, the light was turned out. Hmm? The, stun, the sun was still doing what she's doing today. But God just turned the lights out. Hmm? And he died in open shame. The Bible said that he died according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. When you think about the wonder of Christ's suffering, the only thing he was guilty of is he loved you, Brother Ray. He looked ahead in time, saw you singing that song in the choir on Sunday, and said, I'll do this for him. Mm -mm. Think about that. The wonder of his suffering. I heard a preacher preach while I was in one of the meetings. He said he was preaching on the sufferings of Christ. He said people sat there in the congregation looked bored to tears. He said, bored. He's preaching on the darling Son of God, Brother Tommy, dying for their sin. He said they were unmoved, unaffected. And Brother Bob, this was his own words, he said, so I made up a story about a dog. And this guy cutting off the paws of a dog and then drowning the dog and abusing that dog and, and drowning that dog. He said they all got tore up, they all got upset. The poor little, little poochie poochie, you know, getting suffering. That guy should be arrested in that. And he said, here, I'm preaching on the Son of God and it didn't move you. He said, I made up that story about the dog. You're all about ready to go out here and charge out here and, and get somebody pr you know, prosecuted and persecuted for doing something to some fictitious dog. That's where we've gotten in America. You've heard about the cross so much it doesn't infect you anymore. There's the wonders of his suffering. There's the wonders of his salvation. Now you and I would, we could fathom in our mind that he just died for good people. Although we know the Bible says there's none that do it good. No, not one. 
But he died for the most vilest offender. He even, while they're crucifying, he looked down at the crowd when they're spitting on him and they're mocking him and they're railing him. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they... He even forgave that crowd. I want to tell you something. If Jeffrey Dahmer would have repented and trusted in Christ, he'd have forgave him. And that guy ate people. Huh? He died for the worst. He died for you and I. But Brother Bob said in his, in his testimony, the Jews were his chosen people. But he even made a way, he grafted a branch in the vine where even old Gentile dogs like you and I could get in. Huh? To think about his salvation. Then he made it so simple. We could understand if he said you could have to work all your life and amass all this money and then pay your way to heaven. He didn't say that. He says, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Because no matter what price he had put on it, there were some who would never be able to pay it. So he just paid it all. And he made it so simple that even a child could understand that they're a sinner. But Jesus died for sinners. And if they'll put their faith and trust in Jesus, repent of their sins, he'll save them. What a blessing. See, man's the one that complicates it. We see that in John 3 when Nicodemus, one of the most religious men in the Bible. He's a Pharisee. He's got the Pentateuch or the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He's got that committed to memory. Anybody got that done? I had to think to get just name the names of the books. Had all those books committed to memory, studied under a certain teacher. He's a Pharisee. He's working his way up in the hierarchy of uh, the Sanhedrin council, but he's been listening to Jesus. He's been watching Jesus. He's been seeing Jesus do miracle after miracle. He comes to him by night, uh, and he says, We know that thou art of God. No man doeth the miracles that thou doest. And Jesus said, You must be born again. He marveled. He said, How can a man enter his mother's womb when he's old? He said, You've got to be born of the water and of the Spirit. See, man wants to complicate things and make things difficult. That's why we have over 300 different religions and denominations in America right now. Everybody's trying to figure out a way to heaven. Can I say most uh, evangelicals will say there are many roads to heaven. That's not what the Bible said. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way to heaven. And it's through the person of Jesus Christ. Can I say salvation's not in a pool? baptism it's not in a plan you know there's this crowd you got to take them down a certain road or certain plan or certain thing no all you need to do is realize you're lost and call on the Lord whosoever shall call on the Lord shall be saved now it's okay to have some verses and show them those things to help them so you can educate them on what they are and how they can get to the Savior let them see they're lost but Jesus came to save them but there are some people who hold the Romans road up like that's the only way to being saved Brother Ray, you got saved in a 57 Chevy on the, in the bend of the road on the way to church. Huh? See, a lot of these churches got decisions, but they don't have salvations. Right. Right. Huh? I read a book years ago. A fellow wrote on decisionism. It says it's sending people to hell. I make a decision every day what clothes I'm going to wear, what road I'm going to take to work, and all this. A decision won't make you you saved. Repentance and faith will make you saved. But he made it so simple. His salvation. And he made it free to all. Let me say that again in the case of Calvinists is watching. He made it free to all. He said, whosoever will, let him drink of the water of life freely. Uh, he's a whosoever gospel. And if he didn't die for all, I mean, if only certain people could be saved, why did he say he tasted death for every man? Why do you say that it's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance? And if I believe that predestination, the way they teach it, and you know, we know what was predestinated. It was predestinated that Jesus would go to the cross uh, before the foundation of the world. Uh, and it was predestinated that God would choose us through Him. Uh, the only means of salvation is through Him. Uh, but if I believe that some were predestinated to be saved uh, and some were predestinated to be lost, I'd never preach another, another message again. I wouldn't come to church. I would never hand out a gospel. If it's already settled. 
Why would he tell us to go and preach the gospel to every creature? Amen. If every creature couldn't be saved. Yeah. Hmm? True. Hmm. I'm glad he made it where everybody could get in. Thank you, Lord. Hmm? Thank you, Lord. When we think about Christ, the wonder of his suffering and salvation, how about the wonder of his security? Yeah. It'd be one thing if he said, I'll save you, but you've got to hang on and endure till the end. I want to tell you something. He'd be just to send us to hell for things we've thought in the last week. Mm, things we didn't even act on. Just things we thought. Just, I mean, you ever get cut off in, in traffic and you want to horn cuss somebody? What's, what's, what's godly about that? Mm. But see, just like my salvation's in him, my security's in him. Huh? David said, return unto me the joy of thy salvation. See, it's not my salvation, it's his salvation. He purchased it. I'm in him. I'm engraved in the palm of his hands. Huh? What a blessing to know that he dwells in me through the Holy Spirit of God. What a blessing to know my name's written down in heaven and God don't have an eraser. What a blessing to know the security I have in the belief, as a believer. Uh, my security as long as my high priest lives. Uh, I have redemption. Uh, and I got news for you. He's the one that was alive and died and rose again and has the keys to death and hell. And he's never dying again. Hallelujah. He's alive forevermore and so is my security in him. It's talking about the marvels of the master. Blows my mind that he would save me and secure me. How about the marvel or the wonder of his church? Do you ever think about the beauty of the church? That we're accepted in the beloved? Yep. That there are no big eyes or little U's in God? That we're all fitly framed together? Oh, we have different uh, things that he asks us to do. He's given us different talents and different things, but he counts us all the same. Hey. Amen. What a blessing. And the wonder of his church. He loved the church and gave himself for it. I thank God for the church. I'm a local church man. I'm thankful for the, uh, the called out assembly. Thanks be unto God I'm a part of the church. You think about the worship in the church. We're to worship him in spirit and in truth. And he was the pillar and ground of truth and he gave us the truth and we're to worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, what a blessing we can come and adore him for all that he is and then there's uh, the wonder of the word of God you know what a miracle it is we have a copy of it I get under conviction every now and I got about 15 copies there in my office just to think there are places in the world that don't have one page we have the word of God and it's a, and it's a more sure word of prophecy it's an incorruptible seed. Yes. Is the silver of the earth purified in, in the furnace verse seven times? His word has been purified. It's forever settled in heaven. I don't need a version. I got the Bible. What a blessing. It does not contain the word of God. It is the word of God. It is God breathed. It is infallible. Because he's infallible, my dear friends. And that he preserved his word for you and I. It's a wonder. Mm. And then think about the wonder that we get to witness to others yeah. 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 what Jesus has done for us. We get to invite folks to come and partake of what we've partaken of. Hey. It's a marvel. I thought about this. How about the marvel of His coming? Oh, yeah. He's coming. Sure, yeah. Heard that over the weekend. Yeah. He's coming. Just to think he's going to step out on the clouds and the trumpet's going to sound and the shout of an archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? Uh, 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 Brother James, somewhere somebody's going to be in church uh, and the trumpet's going to sound and God's people are going. What a blessing. Uh, but you see, he doesn't literally come back to the earth that time. We rise to meet him in the air. Then there's going to be seven years of the Antichrist and the second half of those seven years is going to be total anarchy. What's going on in Portland is going to be the norm. 
And then when all nations turn against Israel, and Israel's in a great battle against all nations in a place called Megiddo, and in the, in, in the battle of Armageddon, when it looks like Israel's finally going to be stamped off the earth, he's coming back on a white horse, uh, 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 and out of his mouth shall go a sharp two-edged sword, and he's going to destroy all them that fought against Israel, uh, and we're coming back with him. So I don't know how to ride a horse. One day you will, honey. Uh, uh, we're coming back, uh, and we'll be there and witness uh, when he lands on the Mount of Olives, uh, and he splits it in two, uh, and he proclaims who he is. Uh, what a blessing that's going to be. And we'll rule and reign with him for a thousand years. Oh, the wonder of it all. But then there's another great marvel. I mean, we didn't even scratch the surface of all the wonders of God. We didn't even scratch the surface on any one of them points, but I had to get to this point. Just consider any one of those things. No wonder the psalmist says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Who are we that the king would bleed and die for? Who are we that he would convict us of our sins? And can I say, most of us, it was more than one time. Most of the time he was long-suffering. He just dealt with us and dealt with us. Let us come to church. Let us hear the gospel. And he dealt with us and dealt with us. Uh, and finally we surrendered and we uh, uh, repented and trusted in Christ. Who are we that he would deal with us like that? Amen. The marvel of all that he's done in our lives. How many times he's blessed us. How many times he's protected you on the highways. How many good jobs he's given you. And the good place he's given you to live. The nice car he's given you to drive. Uh, uh, the money he's put in your bank account. The groceries he's put in your guy. I mean, God! been good to us uh, we think about all the marvels of God and then there's the great marvel of why we, are we complacent if we would have truly been thinking about all the marvels of God on the way to church by the time we got here we'd been ready to worship Amen. probably wouldn't have got to preach he'd got up and sang that song we'd kick the walls out of this place but we're complacent look over in Psalm 78, verse 11. I want you to see it. Look what the Bible says. In verse 10, They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in His law. Here it is. And forgot and forgot His works and His wonders that He had showed them. You know why we complain? You know why we murmur? You know why we get depressed? You know why we get discouraged? You know why we want to throw in the towel? You know why we end up in the first three or four verses of chapter 77? We forget the wonders of God. We get complacent. We come to church, we expect somebody to have a good song. We expect the preacher to get up and preach. We're just, you know, expect to just go through the motion and everything be wonderful. But we don't consider and marvel at the wonders of God. When I was driving down Houston Road looking at that rainbow last night, I about come unglued thinking about the wonders and the splendors of Almighty God. Amen. And that that great God of glory yeah. lives inside of me. Yeah. It would truly blow our minds and rearrange our lives if we just consider the wonders of the Lord. But Brother Randy, we get all jacked up when we forget about them. And when all your focus is on you, it's because you've done forgotten that all the focus should be on Him. And when He becomes our focus, then, friends, we'll truly have revival. Then we'll truly impact this world. Then folks will truly inquire of what we have that they don't have. See, when you're walking on your lower lip, that doesn't impress them because they're doing the same thing. But when they see you serving a God that elevates you to walk over your circumstances, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for folks that are real. I wonder, when was the last time you just marveled at His wonders? the last time you considered how vast and how great he is and that in all of his vastness and greatness he still takes time for you Amen. oh what a God I wonder tonight are you willing to lose sight of yourself for just a little bit 
and start putting your attention on him. I promise you, you do that, and business will pick up in your life. You'll find he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You'll find that his promises are true. You'll find that he is wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. You'll find the God of the Bible just as real in your life as he was in that furnace with those three Hebrew boys. When's the last time you marvel at who he is? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. By the coming, getting a song. Maybe you need to come and thank him for caring about you. Maybe you need to just come and tell him you love him. When's the last time you told him you loved him? Maybe you just want to come and bless him instead of asking him to bless you. Folks are coming. Maybe here tonight you don't know him. Why don't you come? Let's take a Bible and show you how to be born again. You can get saved tonight and know this great God that we've tried to speak about tonight. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you that it reveals unto us that you're the one who framed the worlds. You're the one that flung the stars out there on nothing and called them all by name. You're the one that knows the number of the hairs on our head and the thoughts and intents of our hearts. God, you're the one that's long-suffering toward us. You're the one that loves Lord, beyond our concept of what love is. Father, we bless you that you care for even me. Now, Father, have your way in this invitation. Forgive us of our complacency and our coldness. Help us, God, to focus on you and your wonders and your splendor a whole lot more than we do. God, help us to never get over all that you've done for us. Now, Father, bless, and Father, certainly in a crowd this size, if there's somebody unsaved, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would, through cords of love, draw them to an altar of repentance. God, have your way now. Bless and speak through the hearts of your people. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.